we're currently on an adventure and it's the series that you're about to see but whilst on that adventure uh, we're joined by Ian uh, Claire's dad in his Delica camper van the self-build that I built for him so he could get out and about I thought we'd interrupt the beginning of the series fast forward um, to when I've done the van tour of Ian's van whilst up in the mountains so that you can see his camper van. We would just like to say thank you for all the support that you gave us uh, and you continue to give us um, through these series. The last series through the borders and onto the Isle of Arrow we, we received some really lovely comments so I'd like to say thank you. Enjoy the van tour. What we're about to do now, a dedicated video for Ian's van, Reggie. As we do the uh, van tour of the Mitsubishi Delica, um, one thing to keep in mind is that Ian's bit, he's been living in it, so um, yeah, it is what it is. It's how a van should be used. And uh, a van, like Freddy, could do with a wash on the outside and the inside. Uh, this particular Delica is a 2001 uh, four-wheel drive, selectable, so um, there's not much that van can't do. And um, he's pulled Freddie out of trouble a couple of times. So um, yeah, real, real capable machine he's got there. And I'll tell, tell you something guys, don't say this often. I'm jealous of that. If I was a single guy traveling, then that would be the van for me. No shadow of a doubt. There is not nowhere that thing can't go. Joined by our friends in the background over there, the horses, ringing their bells. But uh, let's take a look inside the Delica. So here we are inside. Uh, the first thing you might notice is there's no passenger seat. So what we've done here is made another storage compartment that is absolutely useful for Ian when he's driving along the road and for the extra storage, because we haven't got the height in here that you would find in some of the other vans saying that every bit of space available has been used the best we can we've got the 240 volt system in here as well as a 12 volt system there's two leisure batteries that supply the lighting on the 12 volt circuit and also there's electrical power hookup ehu hookup on the back of the van by the tow bar um, if you want to plug in there's a, a CB trip box in the rear of the van. Uh, it's got two, two um, MCBs on that. Um, one side to run the lighting and the other to run all the sockets. There's sockets, 12 volt sockets and 240 uh, volt sockets throughout the vehicle. Um, so if he does hook up, then he can go on to EHU power. So again, everything's duplicated in here. So you've got the 240 system, uh, your reading lights, and main cabin lights as well as loads of 12 volt lights around as well loads of cupboard space little set of plastic drawers at the end there just for odds he's got a smev look familiar guys a smev 9222 cooker and the sink a unit down the bottom here for storage and another one this side another little unit down the bottom there 
you can see the two, one 240 volt socket. LED lights throughout. So there's uh, LED lights at the top here, as well as the reading lamps and all the way around the cabin. Uh, one up the top for the cooking, which you get from the switch panel down here, which I'll show you in a second. And another light just up the top of here. So there's absolutely plenty of lighting in here. I'm sitting roughly halfway, I suppose, where the doorway is. Um, and now we can get to the other storage where the passenger seat would be. So in here, great big drawer, slides all the way out. That's where Ian puts all his clothes. You can um, access a shelf in there as well. Plenty of room on top. Curtains all the way around. And what I use is a similar track system to what I used in Freddy. Um, it, and it works magically. As well as the uh, main cabin, we'll call that this end, the main um, driving area. Then you've got full curtains here as well also. And there's little bits of Velcro and they absolutely, you can't see anything in here once the um, curtains are pulled. Ian being rel relatively tall, over six foot. Then we've got a full six foot two space here. This particular Delica, he's got the um, window wind deflectors on, so you can crack the window slightly at night, or if you're cooking, let the air through. And also the rear quarter windows, they open up as well. Just enough space to allow the um, air in and any moisture out. Obviously, like we said earlier, he's on the middle of an adventure at the moment. So um, got all his stuff in here, including his jackery, which is, sits down here on the floor. A picnic table and his jackery solar panels all sitting on the side, all clipped in. Little bracket at the end there to stop anything rattling. What he carries with him as well is a big cool box, obviously either running off the jackery, off the leisure batteries or off the car when it's running. And he puts that down just in front of this clothes drawer here. Once you've got your clothes on, obviously he just moves the um, cool box out of the way, gets his clothes on, closes that drawer, no need to get to it for the rest of the day. So again, it's utilizing that space in the very, very compact agile van. If you was to just Google the Leica camper vans for sale, there's not many. Uh, especially in the UK. You'll find them in Australia because they're able to import them directly from uh, Japan. But this is a very, very rare beast. Other storage wise, you can access it from inside or outside. But another great big pull out drawer. And that's where Ian puts all his food and everything in. That's inside there. Another cool feature we put into this is we knew the bed was gonna take up a lot of space but we needed that storage underneath. So not only has he got the big sliding drawer that pulls out here, what you can also do, you can actually flip the bed and there's loads more storage space under the bed, including the secret storage compartment. On the outside, you can see the uh, storage box. So there's a shelf that runs around halfway through. You can get to from both sides. And these little steps here, so you can go and access the roof box. The roof box is side opening, so and it's been moved over as far as we can this way, um, counterbalancing the awning on the other side but it allows you to get easy access with a little pair of steps. For traveling, 
the call box goes back inside there in front of the clothes drawer what I'm really surprised about is the amount of space there still is to get into the into the van with the box in the front call box in place big call box uh, the jackery all the equipment stored alongside of that main front passenger storage box is still ample of room outside of the van there's a Fiamma um, pull out awning F35 Pro um, so if you set up on a camp or if you set this van up on a camp the awning can come right out and give you that sunshade or against drizzle when Ian's cooking very again very very similar system to what we got in Freddy flip up chopping board again extending that workspace utilizing every bit of space you possibly can if you remember back to the storage situation um, I showed that you could get to that, that big drawer that pulled out in the center and also the big compartment underneath the bed as we flip the bed the flipping of the bed is only really for inclement weather and if you're desperate otherwise you can access through the back what's also great with this setup is again if you're parked up somewhere nice you can put your um, gas cooker on top of here and cook outside carbon monoxide alarms fitted uh, just in case continuing along the back for the storage this is where the uh, gas bottles are kept and the obligatory bottle of wine or two so the gas bottles in there in this particular case we're using a 907 because the 907s are popular all across in Europe you can get hold of them camping gas 907 bottles so they're uh, really easy again another little bit of storage Water wires, because the van's so compact and underneath, we had to come up with a system that was easy, but didn't necessarily mean carrying gray waste with you everywhere. So in here, if you're using the sink, you rarely waste water. But if you do use the sink here, uh, the water runs out through the bottom of the chassis. It's all sealed up, but it runs out through the bottom of the chassis. And Ian, if he's parked up on a campsite or something like that, just throw a bucket underneath his rear wheel. Ian carries 15 litres of water, 10 litres in his main tank, which isn't a lot, and five litres spare. Um, but it's certainly enough to get you from place to place to place. You're using 15 litres of water when you're just brewing up and cooking. Oh, nice sticker in the background there. So again, we're using a uh, 12 volt um, pump, water pump inside the tank itself. Um, then you can easily undo the lid take the pump out and you can physically pick that water jerry can up and go and fill it up from a tap and put it back no need to have a filler external filler on this the other way you can do it is with a hose pipe if you come across one with a hose pipe just lift your tailgate up and push it in directly and then you've got an emergency one what Ian classes is an emergency one just sits on the side there and if that does run out he can top up and he now knows that he has to get to water there you go the four by four Mitsubishi Delica three litre camper van. If you've got any uh, questions on the build or anything like that, then uh, please get in contact and I'll try and help if you're building or if you just want anything explained, then uh, drop us a comment.